Hello, this is Dining Table Print and Play, and today we're going to talk about binding rule books, or any other kind of book. A lot of the time, print and play games will come with a little booklet of rules that you can print out, and sometimes uh, adventure style games, paragraph games, investigation games may well come with a, a booklet of stories, prose, or investigation text that is also useful to print out to play the game. As usual, there's many ways to do it. There's everything right the way out from a, a simple stapler to perfect binding where the, the pages are glued into the spine, or even saddle stitching, where you actually sew the pages together in a similar way to the signatures of a hardback book. Now, stapling is the simplest option, and in fact, it's the way a lot of commercial board game rule books are bound. And it's, you know, it's not the greatest option, but it's fairly straightforward and more or less anyone can do it. It's easiest if you have one of these, which is a long arm stapler, and you'll see you can fit the entire book and more in the throat of this stapler. You could staple together A3 booklets with this one, but we're not going to use that because odds are you don't have one. Instead, we can use a simple well, everyday stapler. The only important thing is that it opens out like this, which you'll find most staplers do so that you can staple things to walls or people's faces or whatever. Obviously the first step is you need to carefully fold all of your pages in half, and that's going to be a, uh, a uniform step for pretty much all of these options. Literally all I'm going to do is take each page, each um, printed page, and fold it so that the two outside corners match up, and then holding those in place, run my thumbs back down the center to the spine, and crease it outwards, like so. And it's important that I then open this out and lay it down, because that is the outermost pages, and these ones all fold up inside that one. Now I've got my booklet in the right orientation, folded together, I can leaf through it and make sure one, two, three, four, I've got the correct pages in the right order. If I were using the long arm stapler, I would simply make sure that my stop is set to half a page width from the end here. Place the booklet spine up, down here, lay it flat, and then just push the end down and staple. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, what we'll do is we'll use our regular stapler. For this trick, we need a regular stapler. As long as it opens out, it's fine and it needs to open out all the way straight and a bit of foam core. And essentially what we're going to do is staple down through the booklet into the foam core using our normal stapler. So it takes a little bit more care with the alignment. So we'll square our block, put it down over the top of the foam core, take the stapler. We need to make sure we know where the staple comes out of there. Lay it over the top of the crease. Sometimes it's worth getting right the way over the top to make sure that you can see both sides of the, the staple head and then fire a staple. So we've got our foam core underneath. Our spine is pre-creased, lined up. We take our stapler, lay it in the right place, double check from both sides, make sure that the, the staple is going to come out in the right position and fire a staple. If you are not entirely sure about where your staple is going to come out, then you can take a pencil, see, you can see this gap here where the staple is going to fire, and just draw a little mark on the side of your stapler. And then I can use that to line up the stapler on both sides, make sure that I've got that mark right the way along the crease, and fire a staple down. There you go, it's more or less perfectly lined. Now we just need to flip it over, pull off the foam core, and be careful at this point because you have sharp bits of staple sticking up. And then you need a hard implement, and I'm using the end of this scribe. And I'm just going to hold one side of the staple with my finger, so that stops it from rocking from side to side, and then use the, the end of this tool to just fold the other end of the staple down, like so. And then I can, again, hold this side with my finger and fold the other side down with the tool. There you go. And we just need to do it with the other side. Fold our book shut. And now we have a nice stapled rule book. 
Whenever you've folded multiple pages around each other or a corner here, because the outermost page has to travel further to get around the innermost pages, these at the end often don't line up. They'll form a bit of a V with a bevel along the top and a bevel along the bottom. So that you can flick through the rule book easily, you'll see I find it no trouble flicking through page by page until I get to the middle of the book and then suddenly all the pages go at once. It's often worthwhile just trimming a millimetre or so off of this edge. So again, if you have a squared cutting mat like this, it's particularly useful for lining up your cuts. So I'm going to line the spine up, this edge up, and then I'll take my rotary cutter and a steel ruler and just line my ruler up with one of the lines Make sure my pages are completely flat. If I just run along the end here, take off a few millimetres, I'll find that the end of my book flicks much more easily, page at a time, right the way through to the end. And there you have a nicely done stapled rule book. And in this case, it's for an infamous traffic by Holland Spieler. Next, we'll talk about binding posts and how to use those to put your rule book together. Binding posts are these little plastic things. You can also get them in brass, aluminium or steel. One side has a little post with an internal thread and the other side has a screw thread which fits inside that hole. So you can literally just screw the two halves together and then they're pretty well fixed. You'll find these called a variety of things. They're sometimes called Chicago screws or screw posts or binding posts or um, in one particularly interesting case, sex bolts. This time we didn't print our booklet in booklet form, essentially. We've still got our pages printed back to back. So on the back of this page is the next page and then the page after that. But there's only one page per side. And what we're going to do is trim down the outside of the block and all of our pages are lined up because they're all printed in the same manner on the same sheets of paper. And for that, again, I'll use the square lines on my cutting mat as a guide. So I want to leave a little bit of a gap at the edge of the block, but not too much. The other side, we need to leave more of a gap. And essentially, as a good rule of thumb, you want to leave twice the width of one of your screw posts as a minimum, maybe two and a half. So my screw post here is 11 millimeters. So past the edge of my thing here, I want to leave at least 22 millimeters. I'm going to leave 30, which is a bit of a wide border, but it'll make sure that I can definitely read right the way up to the edge. So I square the block up again, lay my newly cut outside edge down, and I'll need to retrim that before the end anyway. And then using my the squares on my mat, which are 10 millimeters each, I can say I want to leave this much extra space up to there. Now we need to lay out where we want our holes. It's a good idea to have one right in the middle and then one at each end. If you're using four screw posts, then you might want to space them evenly along. I find three is a good number, firstly because it binds fairly well, but secondly because it makes it easy to lay out. 21 centimeters across, so I need to put my first one at 10 and a half. And then as long as I go the same distance in from each end, it doesn't matter exactly how far that is. So I'm gonna go 20 millimeters in from each end. I'll come across 10 millimeters and that's where I'm going to actually put my holes. And don't worry about too much about this marking because it will nearly all be completely covered up and or cut out as a hole. So now with my block square, I need to get a hole punch and punch a hole which is the right size for this screw post. To do this, I'm going to use one of these hole punches and these are generally used for leather work sometimes for fabric. So I just need to find a punch which is the same size as my screw post post. And then I can use that to punch my holes. Put it in position, center over that hole, squeeze it together. And if you can go all the way through in one go, that's great. Otherwise, if you hold it firmly, but not really tightly in position, and just rotate the tool, you'll find that it'll help cut through a little bit further. If you can't do this all in one go, it's not the end of the world. You'll just need to divide your booklet up into you know, six or seven sheets at a time so that you can easily get the hole punch through and then measure them exactly the same on each one. Now, we need to do the same with our sheets of card that we're going to use as our cover. Now, these are obviously larger than our booklet, so we will need to mark and cut them the same. Once you've 
once you've done one half of the cover you can of course just hold it up lined up with the other sheet and use it as an alignment guide to help you punch the holes in the back cover and don't worry too much if these holes look a little bit rough after the punch has gone through them because they're going to be covered up by a giant screw post head and you won't see the hole at all now we've got all of our our pages are punched and our covers are punched there is one more thing we need to do before we can assemble this and that is crease our covers so that they fold open more easily if we can if you have a scoring disc on a rotary cutter that's best in my experience that does a very good score and will fold nicely afterwards if you don't there's a variety of different options you can use you could use the the rounded end of a short steel ruler and run that along another ruler to score an edge you could use the back side of a knife blade so normally your blade would cut that way if you flip it around this way and just run it along the top there you will score a line in the card that's not the nicest finish because it does actually tear up the top of the card a bit but it's better than nothing in a pinch you can run a ballpoint pen down there if you have one which doesn't have any ink I'm going to score my line 20 millimeters from the edge and because I have this neat squared cutting mat I can just line the edge up with one line line the rule up two lines along and then score my line and there we have a line that folds relatively easily and this essentially allows the the cover to open more in order to allow you to read the pages in between so now we've got our covers we've got our pages so we'll take our screw posts i find it easiest to find the receivers the ones that actually have the larger post and the hole within push them up through the back cover and then I can slot my pages down onto that my hole isn't perfectly the right size so I actually have to push them down with a little bit of force if that's the case it might be easier to do them one page at a time or a couple of pages at a time And then we can put our front cover on and then we can screw the posts in from the front we now need to trim our cover down to match the actual size of our block of text on the middle there i can run my rotary cutter through the entire block at the same time making sure that the pages and the cover are cut to exactly the same length you may find that it helps to unscrew the top of these three in order to cut the top of the booklet finally the front cover obviously if you can print on your heavy card that you're using for the exterior cover that's great I can't so instead I've printed out a label post bound manual for in this case food truck champion these are not going to come out very easily this is more robust than a perfect bound book and a lot less hassle than stitching next we'll talk about perfect binding which is far from perfect realistically but it's actually pretty good as far as board game rule books go it's the kind of binding you often see used for paperback books, for comics collections, for cheap catalogues, that kind of thing. And essentially you have all of your pages stacked next to each other, glued down the spine, and then the cover itself is glued on. And this keeps all of the pages in. So for this we need to print out all of our pages, and again, I'm printing them in booklet form. If you have access to A3 sheets of card, you can actually print these in full size, one page per page mode. We will need a sheet of card that is large enough to wrap all the way around as a cover and since i'm printing in booklet form an a4 sheet is enough to make an a5 booklet and you'll also need a couple of other things obviously you'll need some glue i'm using this clear craft glue it has to be liquid really because it needs to be able to be pasted onto the side and soak into the paper a little bit you can't really use a glue stick or something like that for this um, and you can't really use a brittle glue like super glue and you'll also need some flat bits of something i'm using two blocks of mdf you could use 
strips of pine, you could use bits of metal, whatever, something flat, and two clamps. I'm using these uh, woodworking spring clamps because I have them and they're convenient. You could use bulldog clips, you could use binder clips, something, so long as it keeps these two bits of wood, in my case, together and holds the pages between them strongly enough for them to stay in place, it doesn't really matter. And again, the first part is to take all of your pages, fold them in half along the spine, again. I've done all my folding, but actually I'm really just doing this as an aid to my cutting. So I'm going to take each pair of pages, double check that crease, and then run my cutter just along the end there, taking off, you know, barely a millimetre to separate this into two separate pages. And the reason for this is because this method actually needs all of these pages to be loose so that the glue can get at the ends of every single page. The important part here is that we now keep these in the right orientation because I'm now going to take the next pair of pages and they will sit like that and I need to keep them in these two stacks as I go through each pair of pages one by one just to make sure the pages stay in the right order. Now we've cut all of our pages, we need to square them up and place them between these two blocks for gluing. Now we're going to use PVA glue and PVA will soak into the MDF just as well as it will into the paper. So I'm going to take some parcel tape, any plastic tape will do really. And I'm just going to run this along the edges that I'm going to put the glue on just to make sure the glue doesn't stick to them. While you're doing this, make sure you leave enough overhang so that you can wrap the parcel tape right over the edge like this, just to make sure that if any glue gets on this top surface, it's still not gonna stick. Okay, so we need to take our rules and we want to place it between the two taped edges, like so. Now, realistically, that's relatively square, but it needs to be perfectly square. So drop it on the table like so, square everything up, make sure the edges are as lined up as you can get them and then using your clamps or your clips or whatever you're using, clip the bits of wood holding the pages in place between them. So I need to take my PVA glue and just run a bit along that edge. So I'll just squeeze a bit out here. You don't need much for this process, you just need enough to stick the pages together. All I'm doing here is taking my, my glue, my little bit of card for spreading, and daubing a line of glue along the edge of all of these pages. Don't be shy about the amount of glue you put on here. We're actually gonna do several coats. This first coat is really just to hold all of the pages in place. Once the first coat is dry, we can carefully unclip our clips. The pages should be held together now. We just need to slide our bits of wood off because what you'll often find is that there's a thin layer of glue, I don't know if you can see that easily, which was stuck to the top edge of one of these bits of wood here. And we just want to try and rub this away without separating any of the pages and generally just laying it on a flat surface and rubbing across the back. So from the glued edge across the front of the page just hitting that edge so that it rubs off the, the very wispy bits of glue which are uh, stuck remaining. And then you need to get rid of those. Rub down the edges of your bits of wood, just to make sure that there's nothing left on those. What we need to do now is just clamp it the same as we did before, but we're going to leave uh, half a centimetre, a centimetre sticking out the top this time. Because now we've got that initial glue on there, it's going to hold it in place. And we can take advantage of that to realign out our blocks here. Again, clip them together so that everything's held tightly in place. And we're just going to do another coat of glue over the top there. Try not to get too much glue down the edges here, but it's not the end of the world if you do, as long as it's not huge gobs of it, because that's going to get the cover glued on it anyway. Okay, and then we leave this to dry for another 20 minutes or so. Our block has dried up again, so it's no longer sticky. So we've got a couple of layers of glue down the back of our, our spine of our Perfect Bound book. We no longer need these clamps, at least for now. 
And this is, you know, it's secure enough that you can flick through the pages as long as you're careful. But just to make sure, we want to put a, a cover on this. So we're going to use a sheet of card for our cover. And essentially, we need to make two scores down it to wrap it around the block of our pages. Now, the block has a thickness. So the first thing we need to do is measure exactly how thick that is, because that is how far apart the two scoring marks on here need to be. So if I take my ruler, I can measure about just under two millimeters. So I need to make two folds down here, about two millimeters apart. This is actually a little bit less than two millimeters, so I want to go a little bit over. I'm going to measure exactly two millimeters for my two folds, and that allows me to fold the cover around the block of pages. Now, you may have noticed on most paperback books, there's actually another two folds, another two creases, and we're going to put those in as well. And that's about five millimeters out from the creases of the spine, and that allows the page to fold open. It'll make sense as we go. I know my overall width is 297 millimeters. So half of that is 148.5 millimeters. So that gets me from the edge to the absolute center of the page. What I actually want is a two millimeter gap each side. So I need to take one off of that for one millimeter one side, and there'll be another millimeter on the other side. So that's 147.5 millimeters. So that is how far in I need to mark the, the first edge, 147.5 millimeters. And then I need to go two millimeters over of that, 149.5 for the other side of the spine. Same two marks at the bottom of the page. So these mark the, the two folds that will actually fold my cover around my pages. I'm also going to make another pair of marks five millimeters either side of these ones. And these marks will be the creases I do in the opposite direction to allow the cover to open up so you can read the pages and that will make sense once I've done it. I'm going to use a rotary cutter with a scoring blade to make these creases. These are going to be on the inside of the book, the ones for the spine, so it doesn't matter if you use whatever method you use, whether you use the back of a knife, whether you use the um, a ballpoint pen, even if it's got ink in, it's fine, you won't see these. The other two, it's worth using a method that you can't see a mark from. So an empty ballpoint pen, if you have to use a ballpoint pen, the back edge of a steel ruler or the back edge of a knife. So these two allow me to fold the spine of my book. And if you take a look at this, you can see that it's, it's left a gap. That's where my page block is going to fit, just in there like so. And because I measured it, it fits pretty exactly. Now, the next two creases I want to make are five millimeters out from that, and that's to allow the pages to fold outwards like this. I'm going to trim all the outside sides of this, so it doesn't matter if I just take a knife and just make a tiny little nick on the outside edge of the page where these marks are, so that I can transfer them to the other side of the card. And then I use these little nicks, the marks I transferred from the other side, to make scores on the opposite side of the paper, so this time they fold outwards. So now we can fold these, just lightly pre-fold them outwards. We've got our original folds that allow us to keep the pages, the page block in there, and then you have these new folds that allow us to open the cover so you can actually read the pages. Now, we simply need to cover the inside in glue, and essentially we want to keep our glue as close to that interior spine as possible. Under no circumstances must your glue sp stray past this outside crease, because if you do, then you won't be able to lift the front cover off. It will just be stuck to the front, and you'll have to just bend it out anyway. If you're worried about your glue going over the lines, and you don't think you can get it quite accurate enough, then don't worry, just take a bit of masking tape and run it up against this edge and up against this edge so that even if your glue does stray a bit, you can peel the masking tape off before you actually stick it together and it'll be fine. Just dab some glue along this interior spine all the way down. Keep a few millimeters away from the outside folds because this glue will squeeze out a bit anyway. I find it helps to pre-fold it a bit and then just slot the pages into that crevice. And then you want to fold it shut, push the block of pages as far down inside there as you can, 
and then put it back in between the two bits of wood. And there's the, the spine of our book. Okay, that's had 20 minutes or so to dry. So we can take it out of the clips. And now we have a nice, perfect bound book. The cover opens fairly neatly because we put those score marks in there so we can open it out and read the pages easily and it doesn't crack open the spine. All of the pages are held pretty well in place. You can tug at them and they don't go anywhere and you can flick through it fairly well. There's two more things to do. Firstly, we need to trim the edges of this so that it's a neat square all the way around and also I made the first book a little while ago. This is the second book of this game. So I need to make, this, make sure the second book is the same size. And then we need to apply a label for the cover. Now you could have printed the cover on the card and had the front here and then done a wraparound spine and maybe even lined up the text perfectly so that it went down the back of the spine there, had a bit of blurb on the back, but it's a lot of hassle. And especially if you have a laser printer which will curl this cardstock as it goes through, you'll have a lot of trouble getting it to lay flat after it's printed. So all in all, it's a lot easier to just stick a label on afterwards. First things first, I need to make sure that this is the same size as this one and I need to trim all the edges so that they're square. Be aware that as you hit the spine at the end there, there's a little bit of resistance. So don't push so hard that you flip off and uh, cut off your fingers. It helps if you push your ruler out from the spine towards the mark so that all of the pages lay flat when you're doing this cut. There we go. Two books that are the same size. Finally, we just need to cut out the label for the cover and stick it into place. There we go. There's our perfect band book matching its sibling. We've got a nice label up front cover, square spine. We've got these creases down here to allow us to open the cover. And because we cut the edge square, we can flick through it really nicely. Next, we're going to look at stitch binding. And specifically, I'll be doing a pamphlet stitch. Stitching signatures or bits of your book together with a needle and thread obviously has been in practice for centuries. The subsections of hardback books are nearly all stitched together and then stitched to a binding strip at the back. Um, we'll be doing the simple version of that and I'm going to be stitching together Firebrands, which is a, a simple RPG based on the Apocalypse World system, set in the Mobile Frame Zero universe if you're familiar with that. For this we will need Obviously a pencil and a ruler to lay out our marks. We'll need an awl, and this is possibly the cheapest, crappiest awl you'll ever come across, but it still works. And the sewing kit. Well, a needle and thread anyway. As usual, the first step is simply folding our entire book in half because we've printed it in booklet mode and we want to make sure that it is correctly collated. Just a note, I printed the cover on slightly nicer paper. This is actually a sort of a semi-gloss photo paper and the interior page is just on regular printer paper. And that gives the cover a little bit more of a tactile feel. It's not, it's not important, you can do without, but since we're going to go to all the effort of stitching the spine, I figured I might as well. So first of all, simply um, folding everything again. Now we've folded our entire booklet we need to make the holes for the stitches and I'll put the cover on at this point as well. Now, opening out the booklet to the center pages, so we've got that center fold, we need to measure exactly where we want our holes to be. And for a pamphlet stitch, we need five holes. So the simple option is one dead center. So I'll measure that and that's gonna be, again, it's 21 centimeters all the way across the page. So I'll make a mark at 10 and a half centimeters. One at each end, and again, we'll have one 20 millimeters from each end, so at 19 and two centimeters. And then we'll do one halfway between each of these three holes. So there we have five evenly spaced marks down our spine. And we need to make holes in these. So 
I'm going to again use a bit of foam core underneath here just as a something to absorb the spike of the awl. What I'm actually going to do is divide this into two sets because there's eight sheets here and it's going to be easier to punch through just a few pages at once. And I literally just get my awl, stab it through the holes. I want to try and get this hole as centered down the spine as possible. And then on the outside, we've gone all the way through that cover with our five holes. Do, 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 do. You want to choose a relatively coarse thread for this. So this is not by any means the, the thinnest, finest thread in the sewing box. And obviously choose a color you like. I'm printing a book which is mostly white. The pages are white. So I'm going to use white thread so that it disappears as much as possible. If you wanted to be able to see the stitching, then choose a darker thread. If you are doing a, a book with a blue cover, maybe you'd be better off with a blue thread. The actual amount of thread we'll use will be a little bit more than twice the length of the spine. We'll cut off three times the length of the spine just to make sure that we definitely have enough. If you want to make sure you don't have any trouble, then just use more thread. If you've not done sewing before, one of these is very useful for threading your needle. It's got a little loop of wire on the end there, and essentially push that loop of wire through the eye of the needle, like so. And then we can put the thread through that little loop of wire, which is relatively easy because it's gigantic, comparatively speaking. And then we can use that to pull the thread through the end of the needle. For this, we don't need a knot on the end of the thread. What we do need is to not lose it. So what you may find helps is a little bit of masking tape. Now, with a pamphlet stitch, there will be somewhere on your book that you will have a knot left over because we need to basically loop this around all these holes and then tie it to itself. One option is to have your knot on the back, which means that it will just stick out the back of the book. One option is to use spine tape, and this is a, a thick, pretty, rigid, sticky tape. And we would just run that down the back of our book, fold it over all of the stitching and cover it up. And in that case, if there's a, a knot on the back, it doesn't matter because the spine tape will cover it up and we'll never see it. Another option is to have it in the center of the book, which is the easiest, to be honest, in terms of actually making a book. But it's a bit unsightly. You get to the center of your book and you find there's a knot in the way. And also it causes your book to fall open at that particular point, which is a little bit annoying. So what I'm going to do instead actually is I'm going to have the knot in between the back page of the book and the back cover. And this is this hides it as well as it can be hidden, really. So basically, wherever you want your knot to be, that's where you first plunge your, your needle into the book. So I want it in between the back cover and the back page. So I want to put my needle in here. And I put it through the center hole all the way and just pull the thread through. I need to keep a little bit here to tie off and no more than half the spine length realistically, a little bit less than that is best. Just to keep that in place, I'm going to use a bit of masking tape on the back cover of the book here, just to keep that thread there. We come around to the back where we've pulled our thread through and we need to go in again through the second to top hole. And what you'll probably find at this point is it's hard to get it all the way through the cover and also the block of pages. So push it just through the cover and then open the cover out and on the inside, I can take my block of pages all lined up so that the holes line up and just push the needle through that hole in the block of pages as well, all the way through to the center of the book. If it doesn't go all the way through to the center of the book, find where it has gone and then just help it through the last few pages. When you pull the thread tight, it will put the pages back together again. Now we need to go out from the inside through the top hole. It doesn't matter for the first few if you don't get them, don't get the needle through all in one go. And again, once we bring it to the outside, we can draw it tight, take up all of that excess thread that might have been hiding somewhere. Next, we need to go back in. So we've, we've gone from the center in the second hole, out the top hole. Now we're going to go in the second hole again. This time, rather than going out the center, we're actually going to skip two holes down to the second to last hole. So that's in the one, two, three, fourth hole down. And now we're going in the final hole, right at the bottom of the book. If at this point you find that some of your stitches might be a little bit loose, you see that? Give each of the stitches in turn a tug. So you've got your first stitch here. So we pull that and it makes sure that it's taut on the inside where we taped the end. Come on the inside, pull the top stitch that runs down to this top stitch on the outside here. 
and then on the inside our two long stitch so we're taking up all of that slack that we've had right since the tape right the way down here pull that taut and then pull our needle out just to keep everything as tight as possible and then we just knit out again on that fourth hole again pull that taut and now We've got our final stitch, we just want to go in again, this last centre hole. Because we want our knot on the inside cover, we don't go all the way through to the centre of the book. We just unfold the outside cover and thread our needle through to in between the last page and the outside cover, where we had our previous, our other end of our thread. And we just need to tie them together in a neat little knot. Get rid of our tape now. To tie off the whole thread and secure the book. So any knot that you can do will work. We just need it as tight to the page, to the hole as possible. There we go. And that's decent on the outside, decent on the inside. And we've just got this knot here. We can now trim these two threads fairly close to the knot. And we have our nice stitch bound book. In keeping with any folded paper book, the, it has to be folded further on the outside than it is on the inside. So you may find it helps to trim that outside edge just a little bit. Make sure that all the edges of all of the pages line up. And there we go. Neat stitching down the back. Neat stitching on the inside. And uh, you can Click through and read your book.